Now, this is an unfortunate reality. By the time you learn about the camera or you even get the camera, the companies that created the cameras have already gone through their creative processes and innovated. And now it is your turn. So the goal is... Every camera comes with its own workarounds. Even cameras like the Sony FX3, the Canon C70, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras, the Lumix S52X and the 2, or even the first version. And that's just to name a few that I feel are comparable to the Sony FX3. Now this is an unfortunate reality, the part of reality where you are sold on a camera that can solve your problems because of the innovations camera companies are making. But when you get a camera, you still feel like there's something that just you feel like the camera is missing something. It lacks a few key features that would make it a perfect camera. But that doesn't mean that it's the end of the world. It means that it is the beginning of where creativity and innovation meet and then your journey begins. Because by the time you learn about the camera or you even get the camera, the companies that created the cameras have already gone through their creative processes and innovated and now it is your turn. So the goal is to find a camera with quirks that pose the least amount of resistance against your ability to bring your stories to life. We all have something we want to share. And if you are here, then you want to share with a camera, create your stories with photography and video, and you're looking for a camera to use. Me, I use the Sony FX3 and I use it because of its ease of use. For me, the FX3 poses the least amount of resistance when it comes to creating, even compared to the Fujifilm X-H1, which is back there in the shadow somewhere. Now the Sony FX3 is considered a cinema camera. I had a camera that isn't considered a cinema camera and that is the Panasonic GH5, which had almost all of the cinema camera features that the Sony FX3 doesn't have, but the FX3 ticks more of the boxes that I was looking for in a camera, which aren't that many. Basically the camera, basically just had to be a camera, but it had to have a decent low light capabilities, a smaller form factor, full frame sensor, and most importantly, it made me want to create more when I went out to create. The Panasonic GH5 did do that for me when I first got it, but as I got to use it more, it's just that the cons outweigh the pros, so I decided to move on. Why do you shoot with the camera you shoot with? Let us know down in the comments below. The Sony FX3 is one of Sony's flagship entry level cinema cameras. And this video isn't to say you should go get it or it's the best one out there. It's just to say that it is one, it's the camera that I wanted to shoot with. Chapter two, why easy to use? I say the Sony FX3 is easy to use because with just a few simple steps, you can create whatever you want with this camera. Maybe it's just how I understand on how to use the camera, including the corks and all, but this is also true for every other camera on the market. You learn its quirks, evaluate whether the pros outweigh the cons, and then proceed to get a new camera or get to creating with the camera that you're weighing the pros and the cons against. But I wanna mention a very important fact before I start placing the Sony FX3 on a pedestal. The FX3 itself isn't the sole factor into getting great results. It is mostly time, patience, shooter and user experience, quality of lenses, and whatever other peripherals you need to materialize your stories into a final product. And what I mean by user experience is, do you enjoy using the camera, yes or no. Chapter three, four questions to ask yourself about your camera. Here are four questions to consider when you are looking into getting your first or next camera. Question one, does the camera meet your needs as a photographer or videographer? The Sony FX3 does meet my needs. I use the Sony SF4 for photography when it comes to how I shoot with my Sony bodies. I have different bodies for different ways that I shoot, which I'll talk a little more about later in this video. Question two, when you use the camera, does it create more 
barriers in addition to what you are already facing when it comes to creating. For me, the FX3 doesn't really create any additional barriers or restrictions when it comes to creating. And if I have something I do want to create or shoot, then the only thing I really have to worry about is composition and lighting um, because the limitations of the FX3 really aren't ambiguous. Question three, when you grab the camera, can you easily create without thinking about where to find what you were looking for? What I mean by this is, do you know your camera inside and out? Do you know where to find your menus in order to set the camera up so you can go out and shoot without wasting too much time? And question four, even though there are a ton of drawbacks, do you still enjoy using the camera day in and day out? For me, yes. And whenever I think of creating a project or which camera I want to take out on a project, it's a no brainer. I want to pick up the Sony FX3 and go, but that isn't to say that the FX3 is always the right camera for the job. If there are photos involved, then I would just grab the A7 IV. And if I want to go out and for the sole purpose of creating and just to capture what I see without the constraints of wanting to create something, but just to practice, then I take the Fujifilm X-H1. I'm asking these questions because although I love creating with the Sony FX3, I still don't know this camera in and out, but I will give the time to learn. My goal is to really get to know the S-Log profile color grading and color correcting with this profile and creating stunning imagery with this camera in a way that i can create a style that is my own and shared with you all i still don't have all the answers to the questions above as of right now but i am looking for the answers and that's all that really matters and the sony fx3 is the camera of choice i will be taking along this journey with me as i learn what i need to know what camera are you taking with you Chapter four, what's so special about the Sony FX3? The Sony FX3 is just another great camera that has many flaws. And there are a few features like false colors, shutter angle, internal ND, and a higher resolution screen that allows you to actually see what you are shooting on a bright day that I would love to have with the Sony FX3. But none of that takes away from how I experienced this camera. I would just take a better screen over all the other features, to be honest. But the robust body, how the camera looks, and the button layout are awesome to me. The menus or the quick menus is a great way to map out all of what I need in one place. I hardly ever have to deep dive into the menus to find what I'm looking for. And if I do, I find it and add it to the quick menu and then it just gets rid of all of the other frustrations of having to dive through Sony's extensive menus. Basically, I have it set up to where everything is just a few clicks away. And that's, yeah, that's pretty much problem solving with how much time I spend in the menus. But when it comes to the Sony FX3, I enjoy using it day in and day out. And to me, that's all that really matters. Chapter five. How to choose the best camera for you or for me you can find all of the information in the world about a camera to the point that you can watch a few videos on youtube to determine if a camera is for you all of the information ranges from spec rich information to user experience information but there is nothing like actually using the camera for yourself and i found that the best way to know if the camera is for you is to use the camera. And when you know, you know, you know. There is nothing that I can say or what anyone else can say that trumps the experience of actually using the camera or anything else you want to try out in this world for that matter. And I would highly recommend visiting your local camera store or the closest camera store you can find before you buy anything. Even if it's an online store that you can rent from, do that. But before you do that, check out this video right here to learn more about the Sony FX3 or maybe watch that video on your way to getting your hands on experience with the camera of your choice or even lens or a laptop or whatever it may be while staying awesome. Stay awesome.